You know you got what you wanted when you gave me the news You told me you were leaving, you gave me the blues But that's okay, be on your way Cause I'm sick of all your scheming Several years ago on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno The idea a person could send a Morse code message Faster than someone sending a text message was put to the test I never saw the show, so Michael Aldred and I thought we'd try the experiment ourselves We're journalism classmates from Indiana University Seriously? Morris code developed during the industrial age is squaring off against text messaging from the information age? A text message isn't any faster than the dots and dashes of Morris code? What if from 1840, when Morris code was invented, until today, 160 years later, we've only learned to communicate differently, not any faster? Well, Michael and I have agreed to a standard message. It contains 23 words, two question marks, and a period. Unlike a flip phone that requires letters to be entered by pressing the right number on the keypad to the corresponding letter, Michael will be armed with a, a BlackBerry, full QWERTY keypad. Advantage, Michael. I'll be at home at the controls of my amateur radio station. With this device, I can both talk using a microphone and send and receive Morse code to people all over the world. You'll find the largest users of Morse code today using it here on amateur radio where we communicate and contact each other for fun. So let's put it to the test. Michael goes first. He's pretty fast. Another advantage, Michael. He uses his text messaging device several times a day. Like most of us, he's very proficient. I, on the other hand, I don't get on my radio and send Morse code every day. So advantage, Michael. Here's the message we'll both be sending. Which is faster, sending a text message on a cell phone or Morse code message on amateur radio? Student Journalism Project, Indiana University. Okay. Okay, 40 seconds, not bad. Now it's my turn. Morse code is a language once understood by many, many more people than use it today. People in shipping, the military, and the railroad used it all over the world. Morse code was the primary means of communication for many industries for decades. To this day, even airline pilots still listen for Morse code identification from navigation beacons to determine their headings. And if you received a telegram from about 1900 to... 1955, or news from loved ones overseas many miles away and the post office wasn't fast enough for you, your message was relayed by Morse code. Each letter of the alphabet uses a different dot or dash combination. The letter A, for instance, is sent as a dot and a dash. The letter B, a dash and three dots. A fraction of a second between letters is obvious to the uh, trained person copying Morse code. Now, when I send and receive the code, it's not for speed purposes. So, again, there's an advantage for Michael. He's been developing his skill, as most of us do, to peck out that thought as quickly as we can. Well, there you go. Now I'm done. One minute, five seconds. That's a difference of 25 seconds. Factor in that the person who receives Michael's text now has to read it, and that takes even more time. All right, so in terms of the speed of communication in 140 years... It's safe to say that we've at least come 25 seconds. For Indiana University Journalism, I'm Paul Kenny.